Hair Debate. I am here with some legends in the industry. I am super excited. I have with us today, um, Britt Bishop with, uh, yes, 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 and Darius Peace. And so we're going to, as we are allowing some individuals to come onto the platform, we're going to have our guests to introduce themselves. Britt, Britt, Britt in the industry, how are you doing today? I am great. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for being a part of our platform today. And can you introduce yourself and your platform? How long you've been in the industry? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me, first of all. Um, my name is Britt Bishop. I'm a stylist and educator. I am the group creator and admin of the Hairstylist Blackboard. Um, I created the Blackboard uh, about five years ago when I was a student, and I got tired of being in groups where people made fun of students for asking stupid questions. So I made this group out of spite, you know, thinking like five people would join, and it's turned into this whole thing. So I love you. <laughs> I know it's, it's out of control, but I love it. I love that um, the education that's provided. And I love like just educators like yourself and coming in here and, you know, bringing up topics we need to talk about. So, yeah. Absolutely. And Darius, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Like I was telling y'all earlier, I am well considering everything that is going on. I am well. I cannot complain about anything. I'm here. I'm healthy. I'm fed. I'm sheltered. I'm, I'm, I'm earning. And so I can't complain. I'm, I'm grateful. So now, Darius, how long have you been in the industry? So, um, so to introduce myself, I am Darius Peace. I'm your natural hair expert. Um, I've been treating and styling natural Afro texture hair, just hair in general, um, for over 20 years. It's been a, um, a while. I can call myself an old head now in the industry. <laughs> but um, I travel all over teaching and speaking on the topic of natural and textured hair, helping people to have smooth and easy experiences on the styling end as well as on the consumer end. Um, I'm an author. Um, I, I do a whole lot in this industry, so I, um, if anybody wants to know anymore, they can always just Google me, Darius Peace, or visit my website, HayaBeautyStyleNetwork.com, in which my wife and I are both um, the co-founders of that organization. And what we do is we help to elevate hairstylists and barbers in the areas of business development, professional development, as well as their technical skills regarding textured hair. And that's important because you know, the schools have failed all of us because textured <laughs> hair has not been a focus in any curriculums. We've learned to cut, we've learned to color, we've learned to straighten hair, uh, we've learned all types of processes, but what many of us have not learned is textured hair. And the reason that's a problem is because now we've got people across the board, you know, who want to wear their texture, but stylists, because we don't know collectively speaking we don't know what to do with it we have to yes. turn these people away and um the other night i was talking about you know the numbers 40 over 40 billion dollars was spent last year alone on mm -hmm. curly hair products and that's across the board and and the, the sad thing is is that from a hairstylist standpoint we all do retail Yes. We got a very low share <laughs> of that number right there because we don't know what to do with texture and so anyway, that's what so that's what I do. And that's that's what we do with the High Beauty Style Network. We help people to elevate their skills, elevate their um, professional development and their chair side matter, as we call it. OK, well, thus bring us to the topic, because that's the reason why we are here today is to talk about um, texture hair. Now, that's something that we have always shied away from as stylists. Yes. And so, but not anymore, you know, more people are embracing their natural hair, but has the industry caught up? So do we have the knowledge and the resources, so resources to supply the demand? And so with that being just said, why is natural hair, um, and, and Britt, let me ask you this question. Because, um, and as we were talking, you know, prior to, you know, um, coming on live, you know, when it, you know, it natural, we do understand that texture hair could be intimidating, but why do you feel that when it comes to it being accepted all the way around, why it's so intimidating? I honestly could not tell you. I think it's because um, there's a lot of stylists who've just never 
handled it. And so they just automatically assume, oh, it's coarse. It's thick. Yes. Just because they see the, you know, how it looks. But I'm like, actually, most natural hair, at least that I've touched, has been fine and thin. It's just looks thicker just because the curls. And you know, absolutely. We've all had that person that says, oh, my hair's a little thick and it took you like six hours to do the keratin. <laughs> that's what they assume when they see, you know, someone with curlier hair that's, you know, out further. They just, it's ignorance, honestly, just from not experiencing the texture, so. Absolutely. And so, Britton, let me ask you this. What was your first experience in school when it pertained to, um, texture hair or individuals that were black you know so now are you coming from a school that was predominantly like was it mixed or how was it so i was one of three white people in my school um <laughs> i i didn't want to go to paul mitchell or one of those schools that just taught one brand i found um a tech school and it ended up being the most reasonably priced for me so yeah. that's why i went there and day one that's what we started with like um my mannequins were black and um that's just what we started with i okay yeah the only white people i worked on in school was uh, my mom and i brought on some friends one time <laughs> oh no what were you let me just say you were truly blessed you know yeah. because when i was in school I, I have to say i went to empire and it was diverse you know, and so we did not have a chance to, you couldn't say, well, I'm not comfortable with that, with servicing that client. You had to service all clients. And so thus kind of broke away that stigma of being intimidated when it came to servicing certain hair textures. Darius, how about you? So fortunately, so when I went to school, um, there was no focus on natural Afro texture or even curly texture, period. It was all about chemically processing the hair with either relaxer treatments or with curly perm treatments or with color treatments. But it was all, you know, everything was chemical, um, chemically um, triggered and uh, it was everything was about the chemical. Okay. And cutting and cutting. But there was little to no focus on natural hair and texture hair for that matter. Now, because I had a lot of hair, uh, which I still have a lot of hair, but I had a I, I didn't have locks then. I just had a big massive afro, just a lot of hair. <laughs> and because I had become familiar with my hair, I had started creating these really beautiful, polished, modern styles on my hair. And I had no idea that I was actually innovating a modern approach mm -hmm. to styling natural hair. That wasn't my intent. My intent was to just get my, just do my hair. And as a student, I was made responsible for teaching techniques for texture to the people in the classroom. Our book had no focus on texture. You know, it was a very small few pages in there. To yes. Talk about, but, but there was no emphasis. And again, from a business and an economic standpoint, that creates a failed system because now, you know, as Britt just said, you know, if someone were to come her way, you know, a lot of times, or not even just her way, just people's way, we are, we, we, we're afraid because we've never experienced it. It's not because yes. of stigmas, it's the, it's the lack of knowledge. It's like she said, it's the ignorance and not, you know, ignorant in the negative stigma or with a negative connotation, but ignorance in the form of just not knowing. When you don't know, yes. it's like, I, I've never dealt with this before. And as beauty professionals going to school and paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars right. for education and then renewing a license every year and, you know, going and purchasing continuing education from experts who are doing the exact same thing, which there's nothing wrong with that. You want to teach what you're an expert in, but the market has shifted. And now that yes. and this is across the board, it's not just a black thing. If you look at a lot of the marketing campaigns, you'll recognize that people are embracing texture across yes. the board. And so, so whenever I think about that, I just think that a lot of people are afraid because they don't know. And this is not just a, a white thing, because I know when you think about the mainstream beauty shows, they'll throw most of the black educators in a textured category. But the yes. interesting thing, the, the, the irony of it is that most black hairstylists are not familiar or uh, proficient with texture because everything has always been centered around straightening, relaxing, yes 
Um, if you want to go way back in the day, processing with Jerry Curl, Curly Perm. <laughs> um, and so, you know, so it, so there has been no focus to even teach it. So to throw everybody in a texture category, it's really a false, um, it's false advertisement because these people don't really know texture. They, we all as beauty professionals, I'm just generally speaking, we run yes. from texture because yes. we don't know it. We haven't experienced Absolutely. it. We haven't practiced it. And now that the market has shifted as beauty professionals, we've lost our credibility as experts because yes. now the consumer is looking for the girl or the guy in their bathroom mirror to coach them and usher them into a good hair experience. Now, fortunately, yes. fortunately that's not happening. You know, there are a lot of um, consumers out there who are fed up. They purchased every product you can think of because, again, $40 billion was spent on products that don't work. And right. the reason that they don't, it's not that the products don't work, but these people are what my wife and I say, they're looking for hairstylists in a bottle. And as they hairstylists, are. we know that there's no solution in the bottle. It's right here. It's in our hands. It, it is. And so, and so that's where the education comes in, just making sure that we are all proficient to accommodate any texture of hair, any length of hair, and any condition of hair, because our opportunities become limited when we don't. No, absolutely. And, and let me just say, I actually, years ago, um, when I first started the platform, um, I, I truly realized I was in a salon suite. And so it was diverse. And so talking to different stylists and, and their clients and just being liberty, some of the, those stylists will allow me to come in and sit inside of their salon. I was able to hear the conversation. And so thus I realized like, okay, there are some things that we need to talk about because there is a gap. And so I reached out to this marketing team that actually worked with this, and I'm not going to say the product company, but a major brand. And so when I went to talking to them pertaining to creating, creating this platform and the platform being, um, the, the platform is for consumers, you know, um, it is to bring all the stylists to one platform with the same type of goals and mindsets of involving this industry and then saying that okay to the consumers here we are you know and, and we operate under these morals this character and this mission you know and so when i was talking to the sales rep the marketing representative he came he said okay i would like to come and sit down and, and talk to you he came in and he said you know he said i was he said because Typically, when you talk to stylists and when they create platforms and whatnot, it's for other stylists. He said, typically, it's not for consumers. He said, and the reason why um, um, were that curious me, he said, because product companies, that's how we market product, you know, is not for the is not for the stylist. It's for the consumer in mind. And so as stylists, we have to keep, we have to understand that, that they are literally really trying to, when you think about, like you just said, Darius, the education, the schools, you know, um, these, the shows, you know, they're bypassing and, and they have to use us. They do, but they have the end consumer in mind and that's their main focus, you know? And so, like you said, at the shows, they and you can definitely tell at the shows they will have a group, and where the ethnic classes are, it's, it's very ethnic in that area, you know. And so everything is is it is centered around, like you said, the natural hair only styling that the the products only, you know, and and then they have everything kind of segregated and separated. And so, um, truly is the reason why we truly as stylists have to come together and say no we demand change yeah and absolutely. this is the part of it yeah this is the part of it and so when it comes to um so now let's let's talk product so now um because like you just said there is there's so many you know products out here and so you know we're coming from that traditional way of thinking white products black products 
you know, where whereas we need to evolve in texture. It's all about texture. There's no such thing anymore as a white product or a black product. Right. Would you like to um, address that, Britt? Oh, I'm just in full agreement. Um, I love that there are some big name companies that have noticed like, oh, this is yes. a problem. I have these products that aren't working. Um, I've seen, you know, Redken has some great products that work on both yes. hair textures. And I was telling uh, her earlier, I actually use Mazzani's leave-in conditioner. Uh, it's just, yeah, hair doesn't, it doesn't know what brand it is. Like when, when you have whatever is in the bottle, it doesn't know what hair you're putting it on. It just knows like, this is my job. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm happy to see that some brands are recognizing this and trying to close that gap. Um, we have a little more work to do, I believe, with that. Um, so, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I just changed all of that. I had to switch devices. Absolutely. And I saw you. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right ahead. It's okay. There we go. All right. Well, I was just, you know, just saying I'm glad the, the uh, bridge is being gapped or the gap, whatever, the gap's being <laughs> bridge. I, I forget how to make words now. But. But, but, but you know what? It's funny because I'm sure individuals see Mazzani on your station and they're like, um, are you using that? Isn't that an ethnic product? Line, you know, like, is that for your hair? Oh, yeah. People say that. And then um, I've had people come in, you know, they'll book appointments with me, texture appointments, and they they get the first sight of me and they're like, oh, did I book with the right person? Do you know how to do my hair? Do you know how to relax it? Do you know how to, you know, curl my hair? Like, I've, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not a dumb question, but kind of, you kind of like, you're like, of course, like, why wouldn't I know how to do it? But it's, so many people in the industry that can, so. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but, you know, when it comes to right now with how everything is evolving, everything is coming to the forefront, and now we're having these discussions because, you know, it's understanding that the discussions, it's not easy, you know, and having these discussions, but it's a very much needed, you know, um, conversation to have. And so companies, I now, you know, there were company product lines that were creating, comp you know, products where, they they were not thinking diverse, you know, diversity. And so, you know, you would see, you know, just a white model using this product on her hair and consumers would just automatically assume, oh, okay, this is just for me, you know, and then shy away then the black consumer that would say, okay, well, no, this is not my, you know, for my hair and vice versa. You know, you do have, uh, like you were just talking about how your hair is coarse. You know, mm -hmm. and so you do have um, white individuals that has textured hair, you know, mm -hmm. and so the technique that Darius was just talking about, you know, earlier is like, okay, you know, that technique is not just for black hair that can also to be used on white hair that is frizzy. So because, okay, and let me just say this, Britt, would you, because I, I'm always saying this, but would you agree that there are white individuals with frizzy hair? Oh yeah, hair lots of them. That, 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 that had that with the texture could be, you know, similar to the texture of black hair. A hundred percent. I, I that could use the same technique. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, and so Darius, when it comes to, um, how do you, how do you market then your technique? You know, that a lot of people may assume that, you know, well, okay, this technique is not for uh, white individuals. It's only for black individuals. So how do, you know, how do you, you know, what, what, what strategies do you have in place to introduce that? So my first target market is, you know, typically black hairstylists. And yes. that's because black people naturally grow Afro textures. I don't care what your, I don't care how much Indian you say you got in your blood. I don't care how Puerto Rican you think you are. At the end of the day, you know, most black people grow Afro curly textures. However, there are so many, I would say just as many non-black yes. people 
who have curly textures. And I mean, and I mean curly, like most, yeah. especially if we're gonna say, if we're gonna be, be black and white, most black, most white people straighten their hair. Like they have yes. flat irons in their closets. And when they, they run from the rain, just like a lot of black people do, because they already know, you know, if you don't want your, you know, your, your true colors of your, your curls to come out, they <laughs> to stay inside. And so a lot of people have curl, just curls. I would say that the majority of the earth has curls. And, you know, some people have really loose curls and some people have very tight curls. Yeah. But I know that the earth is really dominated by curls. It's just all about knowing how to navigate each curl. Yes. Because there are some things like there are a lot of styles in my, in, in my technique that are less likely to be executed on um, straighter hair textures or even white people's hair for that matter. But I can't say that because in my experience, I have come across so many white clients who have very, they come to me because they have tight curly hair. Yes. And, and I'm not, and I'm not talking about like tight, loose, I mean like tight Afro hair. <laughs> and these are, you know, white people, you know, with this tight hair, but they come, they come to me because they know that my specialty and my expertise is in tight, curly, or just even just curly textured hair, period. So, yes. So in my marketing, I first start with black people because I think to me, I think that is shameful that we do not know how to do our own hair. That is true. That's a problem. That is true. Yeah, that no, is true. That's a problem because everybody else can do their own hair. Yes. But we run from our hair for so many reasons. We run because of um, the lack of experience. We run yes. um, because of the lack of knowledge. We run because of negative stigmas that are associated with our hair. We run because of myths that, you know, are attached to our hair, along with stereotypes that come along with our texture. And so there's so many intracultural things that really turn us away from our hair that my first priority is to make sure that black people are proficient with doing our own hair. That's one. Yes. White people um, in many cases, because I market across the board and in my marketing experience, a lot of white people are not interested in learning Afro textures or curly hair. And this is because they are less likely to do a lot of curly or Afro texture hair because they're targeted marketing. And this is not a racial thing. This is just yes. a marketing and a target and a demographic topic of uh, their targeted demographic is other white people that look like them. And it's, yes. it's one of those things where we have to really understand how cultural hair is for many of us. You know, white people do, white people. And that, that's not to say that people don't have a diverse clientele, but yes. you know, like Brit is more likely to attract a white customer than Okay, so Darius has paused with us, but he was on to something. Oh. So I'm pretty sure he'll be back with us in a second. Yeah. Uh, but but now he is very much correct. So now, Britt, let me ask you this: Do you have a diverse um, staff? Um, not as diverse as I'd like, to be honest. Okay. Um, everyone in my salon. Is, hey, you're back. Okay. So, so everyone in my uh, everyone in my salon. So my boss has two salons. Everyone in okay. my salon is Caucasian, except for one stylist, and he okay. is Mexican. And then okay. her other salon, she has uh, one black stylist, and I believe one Hispanic stylist, and everybody else is white. Okay. Um, okay. So, so now, is it hard to recruit? I'm, I'm, and I'm wanting to to. Okay, it is hard. And so, and so now, now and again, guys. Are you, guys, asking, I'm, are oh, you yeah. asking both of us, or are you asking? Are you asking both of us if it's hard to attract the opposite? Um, well, well, and I, and I do, I would, I do want to know that from you as well, Darius, but I was asking Britt, is it okay. hard for her to attract, um, other ethnicities, you know, diversities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, not okay. only with hiring stylists, but also clientele, um, okay. just for the reasons that I've said, you know, people just assume that I don't know how to do certain exactly. services based on how I look. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and thus is the reason why, you know, platform we're having this conversation because again, it's 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 changing that mindset, you know, and it's evolving our industry because we can't we can't continue, you know, being professionals, 
you know, and wanting to evolve this industry. You know, there was a day and time where our education was self-taught. You know, we sat uh, under other stylists and but now there are schools, there's education, there's, you know, so we have to now, you know, um, evolve. And, and But now in that evolving, it's changing the mindset. And so what about you, Darius? Is it, you know, how is it recruiting in or having a diverse salon? So now my, I wouldn't call my salon diverse in the sense of racially diverse. I would say that it's okay. culturally diverse. And we have, you know, people from, um, we have curly clients. I'll say that way. We have curly people who come to get their hair done. However, um, because of my outside life, so it's not hard for me to recruit because at my children's school, my children are, you know, some of the few black students at their school. So we're okay. around so many white people. And when they find out that I'm a hairstylist, they <laughs> trust me because I'm a hairstylist. But I also yeah. think that because I'm a male hairstylist, yes. there's a different trust I was about that to they have. Yeah. You know, like so I think that me being a man, they just like, oh, he's got to know what he's doing. <laughs> you know, he, he's got to know, you know. And so I think that that plays a big role in me being able, because they always ask, well, can you do my hair? I'd love for you to do my hair. You know, I mean, for so it's not hard as far as recruiting is concerned because my networks extend beyond my race yes so, so that yes. makes it a, that makes it a lot easier for me to do it but i'm also able to showcase um proficiency in my verbiage as well as my my work and so because yes. i because i work i do on set hair and as an on set stylist you have to be proficient with everything because you never know what you're going to have to do with that character. And, yeah. you know, from a product standpoint, I never switch my products. Like I know that <laughs> hair is hair. And so right. this product that I'm going to use on this hair, I'm going to be able to make this character look this way with this right here. And so, so, so anyway, as far as to answer your question, as far as the recruitment is concerned, it's, um, it's, it's not as challenging as it would be if my, um, life was it was just strictly all I deal with is black people in, in every every part of my life. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So now in evolving this change, we do understand that curriculum, you know, from these schools are going to have to change. And so understand that with the legends is on this platform, we are mandating you companies, okay, <laughs> um, to create change in that. And then someone, um, Ms. Lane, um, made a comment on here, and she stated that we need to have some um, different people that's in the product labs, you know, as well. But then also, too, more so, I would say marketing. Yeah. You know, this is a marketing thing. It's it definitely a marketing thing. And so, um, and, and, and collectively, our voice, you know, has to be heard. And so, um, so Brent, let me ask you this. What are some um, challenges that you have when it comes to servicing um, ethnic hair or, you know, you know, textured hair, coarse hair? Uh I feel like my only challenges are possibly just the way I look, but, but okay. like if it's for service that I can do, pretty much it's braiding that I'm not comfortable with. And it's only yes. because I spent time on it in school. I never got it nice and neat. I, you know, yes. a lot of the girls in my school, they were already braiders before they started. So I can do a co couple uh, cornrows going back or I could set it up for a sew in because you can't see it. Yeah. But if nice, don't ask me. Um, but I would say that would be about it. Um, if do you mind if I tell a like quick story real quick? Oh, so please funny. do, please do. Right. <laughs> so, um, at this old salon I worked at, I had a lady walk in and she was black and she walked up and she said she wanted to get her hair styled for a party. And I said, okay, like, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, I have something called a sew in <laughs> <laughs> and what I need, I need, um, curls but not with like a wand and i was like so you want me to put a marcel in your weave she was like that it was just so funny she was trying to like explain me what a sewing was and i was like girl i know <laughs> that's so funny it was so cute though yes no and see that is exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. 
I remember years ago, I was servicing um, a white individual a client. And so, um, and, and I'm in a salon suite. And so a black stylist walks by and afterwards we talk and she came and she was like, I want one of those. And I said, one of what? She was like, one of those. And I'm like, what, like, it, it, what are you talking like those? Like who? And she was like, a white client. And I'm like, really? I, but she was just taken so as though it would have been so different to do their hair. And But again, from the education where I came from, hair is hair. Just as you stated, there is. That's, that's the, the education I come from. And so I was never intimidated. Well, and, but now let me say, uh, but now as Darius stated, I am, and, and I'm going to be truthful with saying this, you know, live, that I am, um, you know, not, I, and I have one client that challenges me, that's taking me out of my box, but when it comes to natural hair. You know, I, you know, so, so when there is, it has his class that came about, I looked at the model, I'm like, how do I do that? And then I'm like, no, Morel, you don't know how to do that. You know, <laughs> so I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I need to take that class because again, you know, we think that, and here's the thing about that, because a lot of black consumers, clients tend to think that just because I'm black, I know how to do their hair. And so they would sit comfortably in my chair and, you know, and then I am, you know, I'm not proficient in it. It's not going to come out correct. And then thus they lose. That's where they lose the faith then in our education and what we can do. And then there's like, OK, you know what? Um, definitely. I know that a white individual can't do my hair. OK, you being black, you've tried it. OK, so therefore you can't do it now. I must take now measures in my own hands, you know. And so and this is where we are leaving the, you know, the clients, the consumers. But then also, too, we're not understanding the gaps and holes that we are creating in our industry, you know, which which is professional, you know. And so uh, but when I tell you, I thank you guys so much for being my guest today. You know, uh, Brent, when I tell you your platform, please let individuals know where they can find you at, okay? Your salon, your platform. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm at Salon Emiliani in Clearwater. If you're looking for me on Facebook, um, my page is it's called Hair by Brit. It's mostly for my clients, but if you're looking for more uh, stylist stuff, that's Strong Salad Clearwater on Instagram. And I'm working on some more platforms coming up that's going to be more education based for stylists. Um, I just kind of started with this group and so I'm as I'm watching it grow, I'm inspired and you guys inspire me to want to do more. So no, absolutely. But and again, thank you for creating such a diverse, such an honest platform where we could go on there and share. I absolutely thank you for that. And so, um, and then Darius, you have some great things that you're working on that's actually coming up like next week in a matter of days. Yeah. So one of the one of the um, biggest things that we have going on right now is um, at my platform, Learn Modern Texture. And so, what we do is we help to make sure that stylists across the board are learning modern texture because yes. a lot of the education that is out there regarding texture, the, the small few pages that are in the book. They're dated, they're antiquated, and it's not what the, the, the progressive consumer wants. And when I say progressive consumer, I'm referring to that person who is always elevating in their career. And the more yes. they elevate, the more consistent they can be with getting their hair done, which is going to keep you paid. Absolutely. So, so anyway, so and then I love there was one thing that you mentioned, because I know this happens for a lot of hairstylists. You said that I look at the style and I think I can do that. I can do that. But the thing and, and once with education, I think that we can all do it. But what yes. makes it different is when you're dealing with the various textures of hair that may request that same style. And so yes. now I'm dealing with someone who um, says, you know, I'd love to get some piece coils done, you know, and then they have a looser texture. It may not be as easy to um, um, manipulate their hair into that style as it would yes. be if they had tighter texture. If you've got someone who's got 
um, looser hair at the top and tighter hair on the sides or vice versa. All of those different um, variables make a difference in how the style is going to, um, what the results are going to be. So yes. the beautiful thing is that right now, you know, our first, um, the first style that we've released in the, cause I call it me having all of my secret techniques in my secret vault, kind of like the Disney yeah. vault. And so, um, so this style, um, I have one right now, it's called my signature piece coils. And it's one of my most popular style options that the consumer requests and that other stylists request learning how to do. And so that one is out right now at hayabeautystylenetwork.com. And so, um, so you can, you know, anyone can go and register for that, but every, um, every month I'm going to be releasing a brand new style in my signature okay. method so That's that awesome. people can be, um, be proficient with texture because when you can do yes. this on tight texture, you can do it on loose texture and it creates yes. amazing results. It's all about learning the technique. And so I'm excited to be able to share it. And I'm excited about all the people who are in, who are currently enrolled with this first one, Peace Coils. Um, and because at the end of the day, it opens your credibility up for expansion. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. because again, you said that if someone comes and they ask for it, and as a stylist, you say, I can do it. And they're underwhelmed with the results. Yes. Now your reputation is compromised. And now yes. they're looking to the person on YouTube or the person on Facebook or the person on Instagram or Snapchat as their expert, when the yes. expert should always be us as it pertains to, to their mm -hmm. hair care needs. So, um, but you can learn more about everything that I have going on at Haya Beauty, you'll notice that I have HayaBeauty.com spelled out right here, but HayaBeautyStyleNetwork.com is where you can access um, more, at, you can access more information. And if you decide to enroll in the course, you can have instant access to the education and start practicing and elevating your career right now. That's awesome. Yes, 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 yes. And so again, my name is Morello Kane with the Hair Debate. You know, this is a platform where we use hair topics, you know, to evolve and create change in the community. And that is what excites me. If you guys have any topics in mind, uh, please do share them with me. Um, if, if, you know, if some different things in the community that you are doing as a hairstylist, uh, we would like to showcase and honor you in that. And uh, but definitely stay tuned. Um, we will have this segment on our YouTube page at the Hair Debate. We're on all platforms. And again, I um, guess you both have an amazing weekend. Finish out your weekend, okay? Yes. Today, an amazing week. And again, thank you so much for being a part of the platform because it is this is the Hair Debate, the platform where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. Thank you. I love it. Bye Thank you all so much. Y'all have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.